This video will show you how to install the Recluse Radius X for the Harley-Davidson Twin Cam Cable Actuated Models. If the OE cable length has been changed due to bike modifications, please note that a longer cable may be needed to adjust the Recluse clutch properly. Secure the bike on a suitable bike stand or lift. Soak the EXP and friction discs in primary or transmission oil for 5 minutes. Make sure the EXP and friction discs are coated on both sides. Drain the primary chain case oil into a suitable container. Before removing the shift lever, shift the bike into 5th gear. Remove the primary chain case cover and set it aside. Remove the pressure plate bolts, then remove the spring ring and Belleville spring. Remove the pressure plate and clutch pack from the clutch basket. You can leave the damper spring and seat in the clutch basket. They will be reused. If the damper spring and seat are missing, Recluse strongly recommends reinstalling them along with the new clutch pack. The missing damper spring and seat will likely cause clutch noise if not reinstalled. Inspect the basket tangs for notching or wear. If the basket tangs are notched or worn, replace the clutch basket before continuing installation. Your Radius X kit includes basket sleeves for the clutch basket. Install each basket sleeve into the basket slot with the flat tab sides facing the inside of the basket. Be sure the sleeve is pushed all the way down so it sits at the bottom of the basket slot. Once all the basket sleeves are installed, we are ready to begin installing the clutch pack. The Recluse friction discs have a notch on the tabs. Be sure to align the friction notches during installation. In addition, some frictions are marked with the colored tab or dot. This mark can be ignored. Make sure the damper seat and spring are installed in the clutch basket. Be sure to replace them if they are missing. First install the Recluse Thick Friction Disc. This will seat around the damper seat and spring. The Recluse Clutch Pack comes with one thicker drive plate. The drive plates have two wider sections cut into the disc. These can be installed without lining up these sections. On top of the drive plate, install a recluse friction. Continue to alternate steel drive plates with friction discs for the entire clutch pack. Add the EXP disc after the last drive plate has been installed. Be sure to line up the notch tab in the EXP disc with the notches in the friction discs. If your bike's idle RPM has changed from stock, meaning that it idles higher or lower than the stock setting, you can tune the engagement setting of the EXP disc by changing the springs. See your installation guide for the specific settings for your bike model. Fully collapse the inline adjuster so that the clutch lever is sloppy at the perch. Reinstall the pressure plate, then remove the throwout adjuster jam nut. Reinstall the Belleville spring, then install the Recluse spring ring. Reinstall the pressure plate bolts, then torque the bolts in a star pattern to 90 to 110 inch pounds or 10 to 12.4 newton meters. We will now set the installed gap for the clutch pack. This step is critical in achieving proper auto clutch function and performance. Use the long end of a hex key to turn the adjuster screw counterclockwise until it spins freely. Then turn the screw clockwise until there is an increase in effort in turning pressure. This is known as your starting point. Now switch to the short end of the hex key and continue to turn the adjuster screw clockwise one full turn plus an additional quarter turn. This will lift the pressure plate and provide the needed installed gap. The gap can also be measured with feeler gauges. The gap should measure 0 0.035 inches or 0.89 millimeters. Now thread the jam nut in until it is finger tight. Hold the adjuster screw with the hex key while tightening the jam nut with a wrench.
Next, adjust the inline adjuster until you have stock free play in the clutch lever. With the clutch adjusted, thoroughly clean the engine case and primary cover to remove any debris. Once clean, reinstall or replace the primary gasket. Reinstall the primary cover onto the bike, then reinstall the cover bolts. Torque the cover bolts to 84 to 108 inch pounds or 9.5 to 12.2 newton meters. Reinstall the oil drain bolt, then torque the bolt to 30 to 60 inch pounds or 4 to 6.8 newton meters. Use a torque spit to remove the derby cover. Add 1.25 quarts of recommended oil or any quality primary oil into the primary case. Replace the derby cover and cover bolts. Torque the bolts to 84 to 108 inch pounds or 9.5 to 12.2 newton meters. When you finish installing the clutch, apply the safety sticker to the clutch lever. Place the bike in neutral and let the bike warm up for a few minutes. Stretch the included rubber band around the handlebar and loop it to the outside end of the clutch lever. While still in neutral, quickly rev the engine about a quarter to half throttle, then let it return to idle. Notice the movement in the clutch lever when you rev the engine. The clutch lever should move about an eighth to a quarter inch when the engine is revved. You can also check free play gain using your hand. Just place your hand on the lever and take up the excess slack. While the bike is in neutral, rev the bike as before and check the movement of the clutch lever. If the clutch lever moves more than an eighth to a quarter inch, check your installation manual for instructions on how to adjust your free play gain. Before you begin riding with your new clutch, it is important to break it in. See your install manual for additional information. Be sure to check out a rider's guide on how to ride with your new clutch. Enjoy the ride. For more information on the products listed in this video, click on the link in the description area below. Feel free to call us with any questions or place an order at 800-969-7501. Don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe for all of the latest DK events, videos, and promos.